Hey everybody, welcome to What the Flick's Christmas Countdown. Christy Lemire, Alonso Duralde, here every day until Christmas, counting down 25 of my favorite holiday movies, many of which are featured in my book, Have Yourself a Movie Little Christmas. Perhaps you've heard of it. Now on sale at mm -hmm. Amazon. Mm -hmm. uh, next time you get caught in that boring old, is Die Hard a Christmas movie argument, trump the room and say, hey, eyes wide shut, now there's a mm -hmm. Christmas movie. Take a look. You got a little stone tonight. You've been trying to pick a fight with me, and now you're trying to make me jealous. You've never been jealous about me, have you? No, I haven't. And why haven't you ever been jealous about me? Well, I don't know, Alice. Maybe because you're my wife. I need a cloak with a hood and a mask. Okay, I think we'll find something for you. I suppose you'd like the password. If you'd like, sir. Fidelio. Thank you, sir. I don't think you realize the danger you're in there. You've been way out of your depth. You've got to get away before it's too late. I love you. It's so funny to look at this movie in retrospect because, yes, it is a Christmas movie, but yeah. it's also Kubrick's last film, and there was right. such expectation leading up to it. And then when it came out, there was such a, a sense of deflation, like, oh, we were waiting all this time <laughs> for that, and it famously was... It's, it remains the longest movie shoot ever. Yes. It's, it's a record. It was like a two-year long shoot. and I, I, people thought, I think people thought they were going to see Tom Cruise and Nicole Kidman have sex. Right. Like that's how ridiculously outsized the notion of the, what this right. movie was going to be got yeah. to be. Yeah, because... Famously, Kubrick was so secretive, mm. and no one could know anything. And and the stories that have come out since then, many of which were written by our great friend Amy Nicholson, who yeah. literally wrote the book on That's Tom right. Cruise. He devoted an, she devoted an entire chapter to Eyes Wide Shut, and just like the way Kubrick would mess with them, like divide them and whisper in their ears so that when they needed to have tension on set, it was truly born of like paranoia uh. that, you know, that he was just amping up because just, just to be a jerk, he would make them do like 95 takes of Tom Cruise walking through a door or, or whatever it was to, I guess, wear them down so that they were truly exhibiting, you know, yeah. malaise, anxiety, whatever. Kubrick's a great director. <laughs> A bit of a bastard. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I will maybe never forgive him for what he did to Shelley Duvall, but that's a, that's a story for another day. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So, but but I think what's what's cool about you know if, if we've learned anything from was it Room Two Thirty Seven? Yeah, the documentary about the Shining. You know, yeah. Th there is seemingly nothing accidental in a Stanley Kubrick no. movie, or at least there's a lot to be gleaned from what you see on the screen, whether it's in the corner or it's front and center. So, I mean, it is, it is inescapable that he wanted this to be a Christmas movie. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, almost every scene is, you know, Nicole Kidman wrapping presents or, or people walking down the sidewalk and there's decorations or, you know, that party at mm -hmm. Sidney Pollack's house where the whole wall is covered in lights and that's mm -hmm. all happening like when they're, you know, dancing and flirting with other people and then mm -hmm. Tom Cruise has to go revive the dead hooker and all that mm -hmm. stuff, you know. Um, so, yeah, Christmas kind of permeates the film and, of course, now the question is, why? Okay, well here's why I think why, because he wants to upend our notions of what is supposed to be a, a comforting and familiar time of sure. year. The most wonderful time of the year. One might say. And, and so, you know, trying to disrupt us and yeah. provoke us and get us out of a comfort zone. You know, marriage, a, a family at Christmas would seem like the safest and most reliable thing and he wants to explore that as, you know, a potentially dangerous territory. Sure. That's my guess. No, I, I, I kind of I agree with you. I think we see a lot of films uh, where I talk about uh, horror films and, and, and action films in particular in the, in the book where there's something about the sort of uh, assumed purity of mm -hmm. the Christmas season that sort of throws darkness into much sharper relief, mm -hmm. you know. And so, if you are committing a string of murders, or you are, you know, taking a Christmas party hostage, or you are telling a tale of a, a dark marital problems, you know, yeah, putting it at Christmas mm -hmm. time just makes it seem all the more like unhealthy yeah, somehow. And the lights take on a sinister tone, a, yes. a sense of foreboding. I mean, the way Kubrick would light things, of course, everything is symmetrical and the walls seem to be illuminated from within. And right. it, it seems 
almost claustrophobic and kind of and kind of tense. Um, this this year, um, the killing of a sacred deer came mm, out, and I yeah. thought a lot about Eyes Wide Shut while I was watching it because of of the way that Yorgos Lanthimos will use the space and the precision of the symmetry of, of a particular setup and the the lighting in in there. And it's Nicole Kidman again, yeah. wearing her eyes wide shut hair, her ringlets, yeah, and, and, the, and the same sort of like you know beige kind of like sleepwear. Yeah. Like it all felt familiar. Yeah, but again, like the house, you know, when, when Barry Keoghan comes into the house and like again is a disruptive force there, the lights. Which would seem warm and comforting, or actually kind of evil in that film, which I think goes back to Eyes Wide Shut. Um, also, you can't see any kind of weird rich guy orgy <laughs> anywhere without thinking of you know, or anything with masks. I mean, it's, right. in retrospect, it's become really influential and really oh, yeah. a, a cultural touchstone. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it, 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 in, in the way that we always think about Jaws when we go into the ocean mm -hmm. now, like uh, the, the the notion of like what rich people get up to when they're you know off in their in their secluded mansions or or, or, or any kind of yeah, uh, you or you know you hear about some like Italian prime minister's you know, crazy <laughs> orgies or whatever like that. You always go to Eyes Wide Shut. That's mm -hmm. the that is the touchstone. And and I and I think the the whole the kind of Christmas motif. I mean, runs all the way to the very end of the mm -hmm. film. That's sort of the famous. Nicole Kidman last line in the middle of a toy store, <laughs> you know, this, which is the, the most sort of innocuous and kid-friendly place on earth, and mm -hmm. she says what she says, and it's like, okay. So it, it's that one last uh, sort of jolt of, of uh, you know, sort of wicked Messing with adult, us. you know, uh, sexuality in, in, in an innocuous season. Um, I wonder if, it, again, like looking back at when it came out and the way it was received when it came out, I wonder if anything could possibly have met our expectations for a final Kubrick film. And and w with then arguably the two biggest stars on the planet who sure. were married to each other then, I wonder if anything could possibly have met that. And I wonder why now in retrospect, does it seem so much better? Is it just like that's always the case with Kubrick films, I, that they're not appreciated in their time? I, I remember when I saw it, I was like, well, that was okay. Yeah. I'm going to look at this again in 10 years, right. and I'm going to look at it in a totally mm -hmm. different way. And and yeah, I think I think he does, he is always sort of ahead of things in a way. And uh, a lot of movies, you, you either need to kind of sit with them for a while, or the, 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 the rest of the culture catches up to mm -hmm. them or something. But yeah, for the most part, you know, uh, certainly 2001 has had its own mm -hmm. ups and downs where people thought it was, you know, pretentious gibberish and now they realize that, mm -hmm. you know, what it's really about and that kind of thing. I mean, Full Metal Jacket, too, you look back and you see, like, the, the urban warfare half of it especially is very influential totally. still to this day. Mm -hmm. Although, again, the, the urban warfare thing reminds mm -hmm. me of the, the one shortcoming, I'd say, of this film is that because... Kubrick refused to fly and refused to come back to the United States and refused to make this movie mm. in New York where it is set. Right. He had to fake a New York Christmas in you know his London mm -hmm. sets, and it's not quite as juiced because you know we see so many movies that are set in New York at Christmas time, and that's a town that really turns it yeah. out. You know, it's and recognizable. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you you know when when you're seeing like somebody walk down a street in New York at the holidays, it's it, it's festive and it looks a certain way. And this movie, it's like mm, you're trying. It's just it's not quite there. Yeah. Although, as our friend Amy once again to reference our friend Amy Nicholson's Tom Cruise book, as she unearthed in her massive research that she did. Kubrick sent a production designer to New York to physically measure the width of the sidewalks and the distance between right. like a mailbox and a light pole. So, you know, although the vibe was sure. not right necessarily, you know. The blueprint. Right, right. The minutia, <laughs> the obsessive Kubrickian minutia was right. So. Now, I've heard people say that, uh, I mean, I, I, I'd say I, this is a, a, a chunk of Cruz's career that I admire. He mm -hmm. was worked with people like Scorsese and and Oliver Stone, mm -hmm. and Paul Thomas Anderson. He, you know, took like you said 2 years right. off of a very hot movie career to make mm -hmm. this one movie, which is unheard of. But now I have heard a lot of people sort of say, "Oh, well, Kubrick was just using him the way he uses like Care Delay or Ryan O'Neill like as an in sort of intentional mm -hmm. blank slate." And I'm like, "I mean, yes." <laughs> but at the same time, I think that uh, I, I, I mean, I can't speak for the other two, but I think in the case of Cruz, Cruz, I think, knew what he signed up for. He knew what he signed up for, but the character is also a passenger, right? The character, yeah, he's a conduit in a, bl in a blank slate, but he's, sure. he's essentially passive, and things just keep happening to him. People keep happening to him. And I guess one of the more active choices he makes is to go to that party, to get in the car and go to the party right. and use the password and all that. But even there, like... He's just sort of meandering through it, like he's a passenger through, you know, this nightmarish vision of what should be a happy time. So um, maybe there is some some truth to that, you know, that he wanted to strip away the 
inherently undeniably magnetic nature of Tom Cruise, and mm -hmm. so maybe he was having fun playing with that Could persona be. somewhat, you know. Oh, speaking of which, fun fact. Fun fact. Dee, 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 dee. The uh, the mask that Tom Cruise mm -hmm. puts on for the orgy mm -hmm. is molded off of Ryan O'Neill. Oh. He's wearing a Ryan O'Neill mask. Why Ryan O'Neill, I wonder? Very Linden. Oh, very good. Yes, that did not occur to me. There you go. Nice. So, it's yeah. fun and a fact. It's a movie I dig, and it's a Christmas movie. So, again, let, let's, let, we've, we've done the Die Hard conversation, and we'll be covering it in this series, rest assured. But, like, let's, let's talk more about Eyes Wide Shut and why we aren't recognizing it as the Christmas classic that it is. Anyway, thank you all for watching. Thank you, madam. Thank you. And uh, we're here every day till the 25th. Come back and see us. Merry Christmas. Bye.